against Mark Weiss. I want to talk with you about contracting, the mechanics of contracting, the mechanics of structuring an agreement. Now, you might say this is, uh, this is a lawyer's job, but I have to tell you, I see more and more potential clients, and that's generally where they remain as potential clients, who have drafted contracts themselves. Well, I mean, shit, it's easy. You just get two or three examples. You, you, you download them, or you, you ask a friend, and you make some changes, and, oh, well, shit, it's as good as any lawyer could do. Well, maybe it's as good as most lawyers could do, but I guarantee you, it ain't good enough. Look, almost on a I would say daily, but that's going to be a bit of bullshit. On a weekly basis, I see agreements in which terms are used. I don't know, we could pick one. Control, uh, material, um, notice that are not defined. What do they mean exactly? In the case of notice, what kind of notice? How is it given? In the case of control, as a change of control, what does that even mean? Now, some contract terms have long and established definitions that a court would almost certainly, but well, hey, not certainly, plug in in the event of a dispute. For example, what breach means. But many terms don't have any established definition. In other words, they are terms that might be commonly used, but they have no commonly agreed specific meaning. The word control, as in change of control, for example. Some terms have, like breach, established definitions, but the definitions could be changed. They could be changed in the agreement. Now, changing them might be in your favor. Leaving them amorphous might be in your favor. But is that a conscious decision in connection with drafting? Have you decided to leave it amorphous or did you just forget? All of these things seem minute. But the minutia of this can turn into manure for you in the event of a dispute, in the event that success or failure, judgment against you or judgment for you, all depended on an undefined term.